our, our final one on this topic of jurisdictional authorities is going to come from Sherry Hunter from the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. So off to you, Sherry. All right. Thank you, Eric. Again, Sherry Hunter, Bessie's Renewable Energy Program Coordinator. Very happy to be here today. The vast majority of the other task force meetings I've represented Bessie and have been along the Atlantic uh, and the participants are not at all familiar with who Bessie is. So this is a, a, a good bit of change here. Um, as most are aware, Bessie and Boehm are sister agencies under the Department of the Interior. Earlier today, Jim Bennett provided an excellent background in his presentation on Boehm and Bessie's combined scope of responsibility on the Outer Continental Shelf. Um, and our OXLA, Outer Continental Shelf Lands Act mandate, um, DOI, DOI's challenge with uh, increasing renewable energy. And he also went over the regional structure for BOEM. Uh, we have the same regional structure in Bessie. Uh, our offices are co-located, so we are used to working quite closely with our BOEM counterparts. Next slide. So Bessie, in collaboration with BOEM, we are developing uh, the strategies to oversee safety and environmental requirements for facility design, fabrication, installation, operation, and decommissioning. Uh, those familiar with the agency, BOEM uh, processes uh, the leasing, all the consultations, the NEPA work, the plan approval. Bessie comes in at about the plan, a permit stage and oversees safety, uh, workplace safety and environmental compliance, uh, beginning with construction, beginning with any activity on um, a BOEM issue lease through decommissioning. So we're trying to develop processes that promote the safety of the operations through regular re regulatory requirements and programs such as really robust safety management systems. And I'll speak to that later because the SMS is such a key part of our program for renewable energy uh, and assuring compliance with applicable regulations BOEM lease stipulations and terms and condition of BOEM plan approval. So, as an example, the record of decision, such as the one that uh, was just issued for Vineyard Wind, adopts mitigation measures to help avoid, uh, minimize, reduce, uh, uh, eliminate adverse environmental impacts that could result from construction operations of a proposed project. These mitigations are developed through uh, input, consultation and coordination with stakeholders, tribes, federal and state agencies. It is Bessie's responsibility, it will be Bessie's responsibility to ensure compliance with all of these mitigations and terms and conditions in the BOEM plan approval to ensure that the renewable energy industry incorporates all of the safety and environmental compliance measures needed throughout the installation and operation of these wind facilities. Next slide, please. In July of 2020, uh, Boehm and Bessie signed a letter of agreement uh, to establish that Bessie will manage incidents that are reported uh, on the leases and will conduct any investigations as needed. So we've been developing processes now that will be maintained through um, throughout the life of the lease. So in, and also in um, 2020, uh, we signed um, a memorandum of agreement that covers virtually all of the uh, functions you saw on the previous slide, so beyond just uh, incident reporting and investigations. So in support of the administration's ambitious goal of employing tens of thousands of workers to deploy 30 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030, Bessie is working quite closely with BOEM to make sure these compliance strategies are in place uh, before the first turbines Acknowledging that the two turbines for the sea valve pilot are already in the OCS, but we're really working hard to get robust programs in place before the first commercial project begins development. Next slide, please. So in 2018, we uh, approached the D Department of Interior solicitor um, to make sure we understood who had federal jurisdiction over workplace safety on on these facilities. Uh, it was a question that the offshore wind industry had asked us. Um, the presumption before was a similar uh, path as we follow for oil and gas for conventional energy. Uh, but it turned out that the uh, solicitor determined that this, the, as of this 2018, 
workplace safety activities on these facilities could be regulated by one or more of the Department of Interior, the US Coast Guard, and OSHA. So having this mix of jurisdiction was not um, great for the offshore wind industry. So we worked with both the Coast Guard and OSHA. And in October of 2019, DOI published a policy statement in the Federal Register clarifying that DOI will act as the principal federal agency for regulation and enforcement of safety on uh, safety and health regulation uh, requirements for OCS renewable energy facilities. So we did this to clarify the regulatory processes and significantly advance the renewable energy program on the OCS and to reinforce the department's commitment to set high standards for a safe and environmentally conscientious development of renewable energy. Next slide, please. These are generally unmanned facilities, the turbines themselves, the electrical service platforms that collect the energy are generally unmanned. Um, obviously, technicians go out and visit the facilities when, the, when required. Uh, so there's a misperception that um, workplace safety might not be as uh, much of a concern as it is for conventional. So we've worked quite closely with the Global Offshore Wind Health and Safety Organization called the G+, which is comprised of the largest offshore wind developers in Europe. Uh, recently, the G+, established a U.S. office. And we are analyzing data with them. And in a very general comparison, because right now the data collected for conventional energy is not exactly um, the, the same as, as offshore wind, but we could do a loose comparison. Um, and appears that uh, the 2019 data indicated that 5.5 injuries per million hours worked uh, for offshore wind as compared to 2.82 injuries per million hour hours worked for the U.S. offshore oil and gas industry. Again, kind of a, a general comparison, but the message is there are risks that are unique to the OCS wind industry workers that we need to consider when developing these programs. As you can see by this chart on your slide, we expect a lot of workers. These are just the projected numbers for the people offshore. So generally what you see when you see um, projections of tens of thousands of jobs, that's throughout the United States for all aspects of making, uh, of advancing the renewable energy program. This estimate is just for who is going to be offshore uh, that Bessie has jurisdictional oversight for. Next slide, please. This is um, a graphic that shows again uh, the G plus data, but we wanted to give you an indication of where the injuries are occurring. Um, electrical service platform, you have to remember all of these, the turbines and the ESP. These are elect, you know, utility grade. Uh, electrical producing facilities. So much more, they're much more dangerous in the terms of electrical issues than the conventional energy program. Crew transfer is a large concern, getting the technician off the crew transfer vessel onto the turbine. And the nacelle, of course, with um, the electrical issues as well as the ESP. And Bessie is, is, has a lot of expertise in analyzing data. We have a lot of work groups uh, analyzing these exact types of issues, lifting, cranes, a lot of them are similar to the conventional energy program. We have a risk analysis committee uh, to ensure that the risk to human health and the environment related to conventional energy production, and this will be expanded to renewable energy resources, they're properly identified, and uh, prevention and mitigation measures are in place. We have a safety performance enhanced by analytical review SPEAR program to analyze innovative data analytic tools and strategic uh, bureau wide processes to enable our subject matter experts to thoroughly analyze the data. Data is a, a big deal to Bessie. So we just wanted to make that point with this slide. We also have, for those not familiar with Bessie, a program uh, called Bessie Safe, which is a text messaging notification technology to send uh, links for published safety alerts. It's a tool we plan to use for the renewable energy program, just like we use for the conventional energy program. Next slide, please. We are in the process of developing health, safety, and environmental guidelines. 
at the request of the offshore wind industry. As I mentioned, when um, the DOI policy statement was published and uh, DOI is no, uh, identified as the sole regulator for workplace safety on these facilities, that makes the SMS, the safety management system, the key regulatory requirement for workplace safety. So we are in the process of developing guidelines to help explain them, uh, explain uh, DOI's expectations, explain the communication that we expect between the industry and and the regulator um, and the role of standards. So uh, there are no US offshore wind standards. The current regulations 585 incorporate one standard by reference. It's an API standard on structures. Um, five design standards are currently underway uh, through the American Clean Power Association um, and um, facilitated by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. So those are those are well underway, but it, it's going to be a little bit of time before they're all published. You all know how long it takes uh, standards to be published. So we need guidance out there. We need um, some interim work. We worked with the NREL on uh, harmonizing electrical standards between the US and uh, European standards. This type of work we're doing now so that our uh, engineers and technical review staff have something to, to look at when they're reviewing the COPS and the facility design reports that are soon going to be on our desks. We are also working with the Coast Guard on a new MOU, George Detwaller, who you heard earlier. Um, there is an existing MOU that covers the work that his group does with BOEM in analyzing uh, navigational risk assessment and the COPS, but it doesn't cover uh, oversight of operations. And so we are creating a new MOU that will have the existing work that George's group does with BOEM as one enclosure and the new work that Bessie will do with the Coast Guard to cover operations uh, and all operational um, aspects. This is a sea valve turbine. You can see that the Coast Guard did do a search and rescue uh, exercise. Uh, we are involved with the Coast Guard and establishing relationships along the East Coast with our oil spill preparedness division to discuss uh, oil spill response uh, plans and emergency response plans. These do these turbines. There's not a lot of fluid on them, but there is fluid on them and even more on the ESPs. So we're going to make sure everything is set and ready to go uh, before these first commercial projects are online. Synergies, you've already heard this in earlier presentations, um, so I'm not going to go through these additional statistics here. Um, I mentioned the, the standards, even when the oil and gas standards are not directly applicable, they at least provide a good start for this new offshore energy um, industry. Um, same when I mentioned that we uh, preempted OSHA, it just means as the regulator, but the standards that are used in OSHA's regulations are a starting point for us. The standards that are used by the Coast Guard and their sub uh, chapter N regulations, those are things we're going to look to first. And the industry will come in and we'll have to have a conversation when they're developing the SMS. Maybe there's European standards that actually provide a safer um, level, uh, uh, an increased level of safety. So we will consider those. Um, so it's going to be a nice way to be able to incorporate the best of what exists in our best practices in the United States with the best practices from Europe where they've been deploying offshore wind for 20 years. And we'll do one more slide that our last slide with contact information. We just want to stress that in Bessie uh, working with um, BOEM, it's our key to us to have really good engagement with all of the stakeholders. We need to understand what your concerns are. We need to understand what the risks are. Um, from the industry so that we can create policies and processes that ensure the financial and technical challenges of developing this new technology are recognized and addressed in a manner that encourages the long-term investment and success of this brand new industry. Thank you, Eric. Okay, thank you very much, Sherry. And I just want to apologize, I didn't quite, I missed a couple of your slides on the Coast Guard MOU and again on the, the synergies here and, and to give the, all of the PowerPoints will be available. Um, following the meeting, by the way, we, we had, had, I think a few requests to go back to some of the slides that Sherry presented. Sherry, I just fell behind your, your discussion. And so I'm going to take a moment and just go back 
and I think they were, uh, we were here, and then you you talked about the Coast Guard MOU and the synergies. And maybe if you could just go over them quickly again, and then I'll, we'll, we'll come back and wrap up. Sure. The Coast Guard MOU. So there's an existing um, MOU with the Coast Guard that was done when we had a different name, the BOEMRE. And it covers essentially uh, the, the responsibilities that George mentioned in his presentation, the work that the Coast Guard does uh, on navigational risk assessment and as a cooperating agency through the COP and, and, and developing terms and conditions. But it did not cover um, operations, but essentially. So we are working on updating that MOU um, to include an enclosure that will cover the work that Bessie will do with Coast Guard. So essentially all activities that will occur once construction uh, and operations, construction installation begin through decommissioning. Um, while Bessie has the responsibility for workplace safety on the turbines, of course, the Coast Guard does for the vessels that will be um, installing and there, there might be vessels hotels that the workers live on. So, and the, then of course, even if there's not, there's crew transport vessels. So the so while the crew is underway, they're under Coast Guard jurisdiction. When they get to the turbine, then they transfer, they're under DOI. So we're going to be working hard to have a collaborative effort where it's clear to the industry. This MOU that we're developing is uh, as, as much of a guide for the industry it is, as it is for the two agencies to work together. So this is where Coast Guard's regulations apply, and this is where DOI's regulations apply. Uh, this is where the Coast Guard mandated safety management system is, and this is where the DOI management safety system is, and this is where they need to bridge or interact. So it's those kinds of things that we're looking to do uh, with this new Coast Guard MOU. And then on the next slide, I really didn't have much on the synergy slide um, because some of that data had already been discussed earlier. Um, it's the, the main point is that experience from the oil and gas sector that we have um and that the industry has can influence the safety of the new OCS renewable energy program so international experience and standards gain primacy when US standards are unavailable or lacking we are going to push as the regulator for the safest safest applications of both US standards and and European standards that were developed specifically for offshore wind does that help Bart? yeah thank you very much Sherry 